better watch out. Hello everybody, today we're looking at Better Watch Out. This movie just came out last Christmas, so it's a little over a year old. This is a low budget movie written and directed by Christopher Peck and stars Olivia de Jonga, Levi Miller, and Ed Oxenbold. I'm not sure if I said those names right, but that's not the point. This is a very unique Christmas movie. It's a low budget. It, was, it went out to like select theaters. I don't remember this being advertised. I just saw it hit Walmart one day. I was like, oh, I'll check this out. It's a radar Christmas movie. And it's supposed to be a thriller horror. And after watching it, I can't say that it is. Yes, it's a Christmas thriller. It's not a horror movie. But this movie was an absolute blast. But before I get over my pros and cons, let's just go over the story. This movie's about a woman named Ashley. And she's babysitting this young kid named Luke, who's like 12 years old. And when she gets there, she quickly realizes that somebody is messing with them. Somebody breaks in. And she thinks there's an intruder. But there's a twist. And that's all I'm going to tell you, alright? So... Here on out, this is a good movie. You should get it. If, you, if you've seen this movie, keep watching. But the, re the rest is going to be spoilers. I only have a few like nitpick criticisms of this movie. Like the whole Christmas vibe of the movie. The whole Christmas element and atmosphere. It's completely irrelevant to the story. It doesn't do anything to drive it forward. It's just kind of thrown in there to make it Christmas. There's Christmas lights everywhere. This movie opens up with like snowmen getting their heads knocked off with baseball bats. They get this crane shot and shows this loving... You know, upper middle class neighborhood kids are having a good time. This, if you turn on this movie, you would think you're watching like a PG Christmas movie, like a Christmas story, but it's not. So it's got all these Christmas elements, and even the score of this movie has like a Christmas like tone to it, like jingle bells with dramatic music and scores, like a score in there. But like I said, it has nothing to do with the story. It's just kind of just it's there. But for my biggest gripe, it's just like this. The story, I just, I can't believe it. You have to stretch your imagination and be like, I, sure, these kids can get away with this. Like, these kids, they're 12 years old, one of them's almost 13, and they know so much more than I did, or anyone I knew when I was 12. They know how to get away, well, at least one of these kids is very fucking smart, too smart. And this movie's rated R, but the only reason why the R rating is there is because there's a joint in this movie being smoked, and you get the F-bomb dropped like 20 times, and that's it. A couple people die in this movie, but those, like, one of these deaths could have had, like, a money shot. Like, it could have been graphic, and they just chose to go the more, like, leave it to your imagination route, like Black Christmas, where a guy gets his head smashed with a paint can, and we don't see the aftermath, we just see blood dripping. That could have been a lot more graphic, it could have been amazing to see, but they chose to go a different route, so I just, I don't like that. It's 2018, or this, at least when this movie came out, it's 2017, we like to see on-screen kills, and we don't get that with that death. Garrett's the best friend, he's like the side henchman, the guy working, the little kid working for the other little kid, and I feel like in real life, that guy would have just left immediately. In real life, he wouldn't still stick around with his psycho best friend. He would just fucking flood. I mean, these are just small little nitpicks. There's nothing majorly wrong with this movie. It's still fun. I mean, yeah, Luke, he makes a big fucking mistake at the end. I mean, that's just another thing where I'm like, why? That's such a small thing you could have fixed. The woman, spoiler alert, again, we're spoiling this. She survives, well, Ashley, she survives the end because he stabbed like this five-inch blade right into her throat. But she somehow survived by putting duct tape on it by stopping the bleeding. It's like if you planned on murdering her and framing it on these, on this guy, why didn't you just go all out and just make sure she was dead? Just stab her a bunch, slit her throat wide open. It was just such an easy way to like write the writers to be like, this is how she's going to escape because he's too stupid. He's smart to do all this other shit, but he's stupid when it comes to actually killing this person. I felt that to be unbelievable. But yeah, for the most part, this movie is very good. It's very unique. I'll give you that. A killer 12-year-old who's very smart. And the acting across the board, everyone in this movie is very good. They all have like an arc, at least most of them. They have arcs. They have some good characteristics to them. Some of them you like. There's good dark humor in this movie. We get Patrick Wart. I forget his name. He plays Joe in Family Guy. But he's in the beginning of this movie, he plays Luke's dad. And this movie is very, sh it's shot well. Like, I couldn't believe, like, this movie only got, like, a small theatrical release. This feels like a theatrical movie. Like, the cinematography is excellent. They got some good camera work in there. Where, like, the camera will, like, fall down with the characters. And Olivia de Jonga, if I'm saying her name right, the Australian actress, she is hot. I love the twist in this movie. It just, you don't see it coming. I went into this movie blind, so I didn't know anything about it. I was just like, all right, let's just see what happens. And at first, it makes you think it's a home invasion movie, but 
Luke is like trying to get in her pants, but if he can't, he's just going to kill her and make it look like a double homicide. Like I said, it's a great twist. You don't see it coming. If you do, you're pretty smart. And they do drop little Easter eggs at the beginning, lines of dialogue that let you know, like on a second watch, you're like, oh, that's right. See, I should have been listening when he said that. I like when a movie can make you like want to watch it again just to see what you missed. And there's even like a poster on the wall towards the end of the movie that says video games made me do it. I like to think that that's like one of the reasons why he went psycho. They don't explain why this Luke kid is as crazy as he is. Is he taking pills? What's wrong with him? He's just, I guess it's just like affluenza. Is that what they call it? Just rich kids and they have like the rich parents. He thinks he can do whatever the fuck he wants. I think that this movie... I think that's the underlying message of this movie is that rich kids think they can do whatever the hell they want and get away with it, all right? It's it's sad, but it's true. That's how some cases are in America. Rich kids can get away with a lot of crap. But yeah, I love the characters, love the acting, the pacing of this movie is great. You don't get bored ever. It just, it stays interesting. I can't say too much bad about this movie, so therefore I gotta say that when it comes to Better Watch Out, this movie is excellent, so therefore you should definitely go out and buy it. Those are my thoughts on Better Watch Out. Have you seen this Christmas movie? Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Did you see that twist coming? And what did you think about it? And as always, if you like what you've seen here, you can click this like button over here to support this video and support my channel by clicking on my cartoon face in five seconds to see more content from me. And until next time, I will be to see.